Welcome to 20 Minute Photo Guide. I'm Don, I do most of the still photography. I'm Anya and I do most of the videos. We'll take you to our favorite places, we'll help you learn best locations, employ proper gear, and discover magic light. Thanks for coming along. Grand Teton National Park is located in the northwestern part of the state of Wyoming in the United States. This national park was established in February 1929 by an act of Congress. The park consists of 310,000 acres of mountains, lakes, rivers, and plains. The entire Teton Range is part of the park and that includes the Grand Teton Mountain at a height of 13,770 feet or 4,197 meters, that is the second highest mountain in all of Wyoming. Due to the fact that no foothills obstruct the view from the plains, it appears as if these 13,000 feet mountains rise directly from the plains and the views are just spectacular. Grand Teton National Park is open all year round, however, most of our coverage is geared towards the spring, summer, and fall months of about June till October. You can visit in the winter time, but you'll find reduced services, some of the roads are closed to vehicle traffic, and it's just a much more difficult place to visit during the winter. Although winter can be beautiful, again, most of our coverage is geared toward the spring, summer, and fall months. Photography location number one is called the Oxbow Bend Turnout. This is a parking area and pullout off the main highway, US 191 287, and that road goes from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, up into Yellowstone National Park. But this pullout, Oxbow Bend, is located about two and a half miles north of the Moran Junction entrance station, and the best time to be there is in early June. And the reason for that is because you're going to have these arrow leaf balsam root flowers blooming then and they make a great foreground for your scenic photography. Also at this location, you're going to have other flowers up on the hillside behind the pullout. You can also walk up that hillside a little bit and you'll see the Grand Teton poking its head out just a little bit behind the pine forest there. That makes a nice shot. This is a morning location because you're going to get that first early morning light on that Mount Moran and you're going to have the glow of that mountain and the mountain range with the snow on it in the spring. This can also be a decent spot for wildlife. I've seen deer and elk come down to the water to get a drink here and I've also seen lots of waterfowl and other types of birds here as well. Photography location number two is called Mormon Row. Now these are the classic barn shots with the Tetons that we've all seen many, many times, but as a photographer, you definitely want to go there and get these shots for yourself. This location is along the Antelope Flats Road, which is just north about a mile from Moose Junction off of US Highway 191. So there are two Mormon Row barns that are mainly used as foreground subjects for your photography. There's the John Moulton barn. That's the first one that you come to off of the Antelope Flats Road. This barn was built in the early 1900s by John Moulton. And in 1916, he received his patent for his 40-acre Marmon Row land. The John Moulton barn is the place to be for early morning sunrise light. First, the light will hit the Grand Tetons and the Teton Range. And then the light as it comes down will eventually hit the barn and sometimes that early morning glow in that barn is just gorgeous. So what I suggest to do here is actually back away from the barn a little bit, back up around where the road has a couple of little parking areas. Somewhere in that area is decent. Line it up so that your barn and your main Grand Teton Peak line themselves up together. Then use a zoom lens, something between 100 and 200 millimeters to compress the two elements, the barn and the mountains, and make those mountains look like they're right there behind that barn. When you use a zoom like that, it makes those two elements look like they're closer together. Also along the Antelope Flats Road, 
in early June, sometimes to late June, depending on how the snowpack was, you have these arrowleaf balsam root flowers and they're blooming and they're in prime condition sometime during the month of June. In certain years, there are flowers as far as the eye can see and you use these as a great foreground subject. Get a really wide angle lens, something like a 16 or 17 millimeter lens, plop yourself down in a beautiful patch of flowers, use a tripod and a small aperture to give you a great depth of field and so you can get both the flowers and the distant mountains to be sharp in your shots. Another way to do this type of photography is to take several shots where you focus at various places throughout the frame and then you add the pictures together in post to get that depth of field that extends from the flowers which are right in front of you to the mountains which are way in the background. Thomas A. Moulton was John Moulton's brother and he also built a barn, that's the T.A. Moulton barn, and he built his over several years in various pieces between 1913 and 1928. This is the classic barn that everybody shows. It's become a symbol of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. This barn with the Grand Teton Range behind it. So I like to line myself up here. I sometimes will show the trees here that are along this little creek as foreground material. Other times I just zoom in with about 100 millimeters of zoom power on the barn when you compress the two elements like that, then you can make the mountains look like they're a little bit closer to the barn. But this is also a morning shot, although this barn gets the light a little bit later than the John Moulton barn, and that's why I always suggest people go to the John Moulton barn first, and then come over to the T.A. Moulton barn and do that for later morning light. Photography location number three is called Schwabacher's Landing Area. This is located off the main Outer Park Road, US 191, and it's four miles north of the Moose Junction. It is marked by the small sign, a small national park sign, says Schwabacher Road. This is an area to go also in the morning time, and what you're going to get here is the best reflections you can possibly imagine of the Grand Tetons. They're going to be reflected both in the Snake River, which is nice and calm in a section of this right by the parking lot. And then if you follow a little bit of a worn trail off from the parking lot down along this little river, you'll see there's also an area that has a beaver pond. And that beaver pond gives you a fantastic reflection of the Grand Teton Range. You want to be here early morning. Sometimes you can get an alpine glow and get this shot before the sun even comes up. Once the sun comes up, then you deal with some contrast issues, and so you have to wait until the light comes down and shines on everything so you get it all in one type of light. Also here at the Schwabachers area, it's pretty good for wildlife. I've seen moose here and some ducks, and you can also see some elk and deer depending on the time of day that you're here. Also along Schwabacher's Road, it's a great place to do a night shot. So you park right in the parking lot and you set up your tripod and you can get the Teton Range with the stars or the Milky Way and then you can get the reflection of those in that calm area of the Snake River right here. Photography location number four is called Lee and String Lakes. This is located about two miles north of the Jenny Lake Visitor Center on the Teton Park Road. And along here, you've got all kinds of reflections and you've got people doing outdoor activities like canoeing and stand up paddle boarding and you can use those folks as a foreground to give a sense of scale to the reflection shots that you're getting. So for Lee and String Lakes, you want to bring your widest angle lens to go for those 
really broad reflection shots of the Teton Range in those two lakes. Also along these trails, you sometimes see wildlife and wildflowers. So I'd have in my bag at least my wildlife lens and my macro lens just in case you see something interesting while you're hiking along. So you can hike up to three miles along String Lake and the Lee Lake trailheads, but you don't have to hike that far to find reflections. There's reflections just off the picnic area right at the parking lot of String Lake. Photography location number five is called the Snake River Overlook. This is located on the outer park road, US 191, and it's about eight miles north of the Moose Junction. Now this is the classic S-curve of the Snake River down below you with the Tetons behind. Ansel Adams made this shot famous a long time ago and since then the trees have grown up quite a bit and you actually can't see much of the S-curve anymore but it still makes a great location especially to watch the sunset. The Snake River Overlook could be a morning shot as well but I always find that there are so many other better morning shots that I end up going to either Schwabacher's Landing or the Mormon Row Barns or Oxbow Bend instead of coming here and then I save my evenings and I come here to the Snake River Overlook to watch the sunset. Photography location number six is called the Coulter Bay Marina. Now this is on the main park road US 191 and it's north of Moran Junction entrance station. Park as close as you can to the water, then walk down to the marina. And what you're going to get there is you're going to get all kinds of boat action shots with the Teton range behind as your background. You can get some reflections there. You can get some canoeists or some kayakers or even some motorboats or sailboats as foreground subject for your shots of Coulter Bay Marina. Photography location number seven is the Jackson Lake Dam. This is south of the Jackson Lake Junction on the Teton Park Road. You can park just across from the dam and you get good views of the entire Teton Range reflected in Jackson Lake here. This is going to be best in the morning, early morning. This is a nice place to get that first early morning light. You could do a sunrise here, although you're not going to shoot the sunrise itself. You're just going to shoot the peaks with the first morning light on them. Jackson Lake Dam itself makes for an okay shot. It's not all that interesting, but the reflections here just above the dam in Jackson Lake can be fantastic. Come on a calm day and you almost always have a perfect reflection of the entire Teton Range in Jackson Lake. Photography location number eight is called the Moose Wilson Road. This is a small road that begins just south of the Moose Entrance Station in the southern part of the Grand Teton National Park. And this road continues down into the Teton Village, which is outside of Grand Teton National Park. And then if you continue along the road, it eventually goes to the town of Wilson. So this road is the best road in the park, in my opinion, to spot wildlife. Along this road, I've seen large moose with antlers. I've seen mother moose with babies. I've seen elk, deer, very friendly beaver. I've seen great gray owls along this road. And all sorts of other small wildlife like squirrels, chipmunks, ground squirrels, and even black bears. If you get a day where the Tetons aren't visible because of clouds, you can keep yourself busy with possible wildlife sightings. And there's always the macro photography potential of flowers and colorful leaves in the autumn time. So when you go along the Moose Wilson Road, you obviously want to have your wildlife lens at the ready just in case you see that moose or that great gray owl. And then you want to have your macro lens for the flowers or the fall colors. Photography location number nine is the Jenny Lake shuttle boat and then you hike to Inspiration Point. 
So this starts at the Jenny Lake Visitor Center. Walk down to the Jenny Lake boat launch area and there you can get on the park shuttle which shuttles you across Jenny Lake. Once you get off the shuttle boat on the far side of Jenny Lake, follow the well-marked trail that zigzags up the hillside and eventually leads you to a waterfall called Hidden Falls and then continue following the trail to Inspiration Point itself. From there you'll have good views over Jenny Lake and you'll also have some wildlife to point your camera at here, mostly small things like ground squirrels, chipmunks, and songbirds, and things like that. So, a quick summary of Grand Teton National Park. Timing-wise, for flowers, greenery, or fall color, you got to go there between June and October. Of course, the winter months are going to be beautiful, but they're a challenge to access all of the shooting locations. And equipment-wise, you'll want a wide-angle lens, you'll want an all-around zoom lens, you'll definitely want your macro lens and your long wildlife lens while you're in the Tetons. Extra equipment to bring would be a tripod, steady those macro shots, those waterfall shots, and those scenic shots, especially when you're getting a larger depth of field for your flower foregrounds. And then you want your polarizing filter and possibly a split neutral density filter if there's too much contrast between your Alpenglow Mountains and your foreground. So a final wrap up of my thoughts about visiting Grand Teton National Park. It's a gorgeous mountain park for grand scenes. I think it's the most beautiful mountain range in the continental United States. And it's very impressive because the mountains rise directly from the plains without any foothills in the way to block the views. It's a fantastic place to get some pictures of some old historical buildings. And the wildlife potential there in Grand Teton National Park is also fantastic. And it's a great place to be both a scenic photographer and a wildlife photographer. I hope you make it to Grand Teton National Park soon. Enjoy the gorgeous mountain scenery and the wildlife that this place has to offer. And as always, thank you for coming along on this 20-minute photo guide journey with your hosts, Don and Anya. We appreciate you watching, and we'll see you soon.